Hello, and welcome back to Between the Stars. You guys seem to really be uh, enjoying this series, and I'm certainly enjoying uh, making it. Now, full disclosure, because uh, the last video I made, uh, some of you pointed out some really, really good things that I, I just missed completely when I set up this game, when I set up the campaign and stuff, because it has been so long since I last played, I completely forgot about the whole character setup thing uh, around the sort of skills and stuff. You know, those kind of uh, qualities that my captain had, uh, I could change them. I can change them and, and change them about a bit. So, full disclosure, I started again because I was I was only just into it. So I thought, okay, I'll go back. I'll start again. I'll do it properly this time, and, uh, and then bring us back to to the same point basically where we started the last episode or ended the last episode. Sorry. Uh, the problem with that, doing that in this game, is that every time you start a new game in this thing, it, it plays out completely differently. All the random events that happen, you know, they're randoms. <laughs> so you get a completely different set of things happen when you go and do, um, you know, the little disturbance detected or suspicious activity or distress calls and stuff. So, um, you know, I, 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 the same thing happened with that little weird creature that we found, the, the sort of transmorphic one that sort of, But, of course, this time when I rolled to capture it, the roll failed and something else happened. Uh, and this time we didn't get the stowaway in the cargo box, in the cargo hold. We, we got something else happen. And also when I went into the space station and we went to the theme park and, you know, that guy tried to poison us with that shot glass. This time I avoided it and something else happened. So, uh, you know, a lot of people were asking me, OK, well, once you played through this game once, what's the replayability? Is there any replayability? Well, there you go. The fact that, you know, you right from the offset. Everything can change completely, uh, depending on your choices that you make, you know, the roles that happen and things like that. And it isn't a case that, oh, I avoided the shot glass, that's the end of it. No, I avoided the shot glass, and then the bastards abducted one of my crew. <laughs> so one of my crew has gone missing, god damn. Anyway, um, so here we can see the, the things that I've swapped out. I did the random thing a few times until I found something that I, I like to look off. Engineer. Uh, so we've got increased uh, engine power this time. Increased damage of impacts on the hull. Bear in mind I'm gone with a missile frigate here, so that works better. better. Uh, old school, better missiles, worse laser. Again, missile frigate here. And ruthless is the kind of uh, the negative that I picked up, which reduced the charisma level by one, uh, which, okay, might suck a little bit for some things, but I can obviously just upgrade that over time. So I figured that's probably the least... Uh, punishing uh, negative quality that I could come up with. So and the other thing as well, by starting again, you obviously get a whole new selection of crew people with different names. So we, we're gonna have to get rid of, uh, get used to some different names and there's some weird ones here. Pierre Leblanc, uh, uh, Yamashita, Rosso Walker and Lombard. And uh, one of my dudes has obviously gone missing. Now, uh, along with all the changes of starting again, I've got a bunch of new contracts because the space station is different in this one. So instead of having a market, it's got like um, a task board. So you can accept a bunch of missions. Uh, so we've got obviously the killing time mission, which is a current one that we got, but we can go off and do whatever we want while when we're ready, we can we can go through that. So obviously I talked about one of my crew members was kidnapped. Uh, so one of your crew members has been kidnapped at the Tesla walk. The kidnappers took advantage of a moment where he was alone. Everything seems to indicate that you were just his true objective. And that is just a plot to get to you. The only clue you have is a note with the symbol of an eye crying, a long tear of blood, and a quote with a reference to a place called The Fold, a concentration camp for the survivors of the Equanian War, located in Sector Cheala. Follow the clue and find him. So that, that one takes us to Chiala. Uh, and if we come out of this, we can see all of our objectives at the top that I've accepted there. So we've got the freighter in distress, bounty hunters, delivery, and to the rescue. And two of them are in Chiala. Uh, and one of them's here, and uh, another one is in um, Remim. Remim? So I think we're in Kodmadia right now. So we've got bounty hunters. Uh, we can go and do bounty hunters now ship is repaired fully you know operational this is the same ship from the last episode so nothing's changed there like i said it is just like i literally i just wanted to swap my cap captain out for for better sort of qualities and stuff uh and uh, i just didn't realize that so many differences would take part you've made it onto my blacklist but uh there we go
also sort of adapted uh, enemy ship has been destroyed. how I fight these things now in that I just I just click the uh, the missile Excellent fire work, team. are you all okay I like double click it basically and that stops it from overheating so much and as you can see the missiles that are coming for me can't catch me because I've got my engine power set to almost full along with my shields because the weapons, because I'm a missile frigate, I don't need power to weapon systems. Missiles don't require power to fire. <laughs> so why have any energy dedicated to weapons at all? And as you can see, the missiles make short work. As long as you keep the enemy within your sort of sights, they make very short work of, of the ships that they can sort of throw at you. Anyway, bounty hunters. Let's see what we've got here. We've got three ships. And uh, oh, destroy the wanted criminal ships in sector. Oh, okay. We're not going to get any dialogue with this one. We're just straight into combat. Let's go straight for this guy. He's the closest here. Let's get our scan on. But I think the weak point of these ones is right in the middle. Oh, no, it's at the back. Well, that's good. <laughs> and there we go. <laughs> so, with, uh, with my skill set perk layout and uh, everything in between that's what happens to enemy ships that cross me now it's just uh and that one's at the back as well so we'll run the missiles past and aim for the engines and boom <laughs> uh the ship that remains turns off the engines captain the enemy ship wants to get in touch with us you accept the transmission and on your personal terminal the captain starts talking we surrender. Captain, the crew is unarmed and we will allow the coupling of the ship so you can take us with you. Um, you're condemned. <laughs> I won't take any risk. You're condemned. All right. Prepare for docking. Okay, well, um, you know, we're a ship of the Republic. We should probably take these people into custody. But it's possibly a trap. So uh, everybody on, on guard and all that. Can I have that loot, please? Thanks. This thing is so manoeuvrable as well, it's crazy. Great. Right, hello Mr. Ship. Let's pull up alongside you. Uh, the ship's hatch opens, you enter, you promise the crew are unarmed, your team handcuffs them and escorts them to the cells of your ship. We've got a long way to go to the nearest prison. Super. So they're going to be taking up our supplies while we do that then. Fantastic. Okay, so... Oh, anyway, what we got here? Uh, you enjoy the tranquility and decide to go down to the training area to practice your shooting. It was a moment that you especially enjoyed. Not only did it help you, help keep you in shape, but it often helped you release some tension and clear your mind. You enter the weapons training facility where you encounter Walker, who salutes you with a nod. Start shooting! You answer the salute and prepare everything that is needed. Once ready, you approach and go with him. The first shot hits the chest of the target, which illuminates confirming the shot and showing your terminal the damage done. You keep practicing for a while, making shots increasingly focused. Extremities, organs, sh shooting immobile targets was something... What is that sentence? <laughs> Extremities, organs, shooting immobile targets was something you had more than mastered. In those moments, you missed the shooting facility of Tacit Stella. The training camp was much more sophisticated than the old-fashioned shooting ranges installed on the ship. Keep shooting. You fire another blast that makes a full impact when you listen to Walker complain. You look at the target, which is completely blank without any indicator of successful shots. Do you need help? No, mind your own business, or do you need help? Let's help him. Uh, thank you, Captain, but I'm afraid there's not much to do. I'd like to increase the accuracy from the distance, but it's going to be harder than I imagined. You put the gun on the shelf and approach him, observing his positions. Spanj the Defiant has gained a new attribute. Nurturing. Love it. Wait a minute. Uh, his firing stance was a real disaster. You grab the gun by the barrel to position it well while you start giving directions. Shoulders lined up with a firm grip. The right foot is too far behind you. You drop the gun uh, and with a couple of taps on the boots, you position the foot in the right place. Both eyes open. This is no movie. It doesn't just affect your perspective. It narrows your field of vision. Try it now. Cool. Cool, 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 cool. Okay. Okay. So, well, that's fun. You get all events like that, and they, and they, yeah, uh, it improves the kind of. Well, I've got a new, a new, a new skill now, haven't I? Or a new attribute. That's what it does. I've got nurturing. Increase the amount of experience gained from events. Brilliant. 
Uh, familiar, I got that earlier. Crew gains more experience. So it's fantastic. You just fill these up with little things depending on the choices you make. Uh, right, let's move on. We're going to go to Chia. <laughs> Project Eden all over again. It's just a funny planet names I can't pronounce. <laughs> this is it. That looks cool, doesn't it? Look at that. The frames were a little bit better there. That would have been awesome. But there we go. We're little stutters. But yeah, it looks good. It looks good anyway. Okay. Here we go. So here we've got the rescue. So I want to go and rescue my crew member that got abducted. Uh, that's 320 away. Uh, we could go via the delivery contract. That's only 125 away. And it is totally on the way. So let's do that. Uh, I don't know what we're going to do. Rescuing that uh, crew member, I suspect, is probably going to cost us quite a lot in... Well, hopefully nobody will die, but I suspect we're going to get some injuries. It's going to be a fight, that's for sure. <laughs> right, delivery should be nice and straightforward. Deliver the package of robotic... Ro robo erotic I didn't even read that before robo erotic magazines to Dr. Chaos <laughs> fantastic Republic ship, requesting Republic ship please. delivering robotic Welcome pornography <laughs> my house is your house alright yeah dude bro, bro yeah the owner of this space station is proper whoop whoop awesome dude awesome robotic <laughs> robotic erotica fantastic uh, sounds like a good use of time for this ship and its crew. Dr. Chaos as well, I suspect, is probably just like a 14-year-old boy, you know? <laughs> uh, Doc 9, Skyline Apartments, deliver the package. Here we go. Uh, you arrive at the apartment block and look. Uh, start looking at the numbers of apartments from afar. You see the number that corresponds to the package ordered by the man who goes by Dr. Chaos. Ring the bell and a small slit opens up on the door. Stupid mortal who dares disturb the one and only Dr. Chaos. We bring the package that you've ordered. Uh, we've taught you the dirty magazines, pervert. <laughs> I'm going to go with that. Pervert. Hey, you. Good for nothing courier. Nobody dares talk to... <laughs> <laughs> Talk like that to Dr. Chaos. My vengeance will be terrible. Your blood will be spilled among the stars. You can already hear the war engines of the spaceship swift, flying swiftly at the arrival of their leader. Waylon's mother. Waylon, what's all that noise? <laughs> Nothing, mother. Someone got the wrong address. Door stick closes the door, opens slightly. All right, just give me the package and leave, please. If my mother comes down and sees the magazine, she'll get pissed. <laughs> um, all right. Brilliant. Waylon signs the delivery note and you laugh like and laughs like a maniac without paying too much attention. You turn around and head towards the lo uh, the docks. You haven't walked 20 steps and you can already hear his mum screaming. Uh, let's go back to the spaceship. <laughs> Brilliant. Uh, let's quickly check the commercials there before we move on. Okay, we've got some guns here. Light guided missile launchers. Uh, oh, superior quality light guided missile launchers. Comparatively. Hull damage 45 a second. That one does 67 damage a second. Uh, the ones I've got currently equipped do 75 damage a second. Okay, so these are these are definitely. Uh, I don't really know what the difference is between light and and guided. I assume just the guided are just generally better. Anyway, we do have a light plasma quality, uh, light plasma cannon, and this Arconian laser we can sell. Get rid of that. A Canon of Republic Mark II, we can sell that as well. This is high quality light plasma cannon. We might hold on to that. Got some more contracts here as well. Let's give our ship a cheeky repair. Departments. Nothing going on here. We've got some scraps, so let's get the scrap workshop working on that. Scrap, 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 scrap. This is all good stuff. Uh, they can actually scrap that, but we don't want them to do that at the moment. Uh, nothing else going on. Sweet. Okay, let's get out of here and go rescue our crewman. Foolish fool getting captured by uh, the, these cult punks. Uh, that away. 202 commas. Almost certainly going to be interrupted on the way. Uh, so somewhere on this planet is going to be a dot. Yep, there we go. Two dots. So hangar, shipyard, exit. Right, okay, so let's go with shipyard then, I guess. Oh, right, okay. Is this where we buy new boats? It is. The Cosmos Transporter, the Infinite Astral, the Cosmos Explorer. Oh, yeah, look at that little beast. <laughs> that 
that's the one that we had in the prologue, wasn't it? That's not a bad little ship. Look at all the hard points this thing's got. Amazing. 15,000 credit. We've only got 5,000, of course. Uh, so this is good. This is what I was missing last time I played the game. There was no way to buy the new ships. So the Explorer's fun. The Infinite Astral is kind of like... It's got a lot of hard points, though. This thing just sucks, doesn't it? <laughs> it's like, what is the point of you? You've only got these, these hard points. Look at the Infinite Astral, though. Boom, weapon systems. Wow. Yeah, I think that's the ship they kind of think you're going to go with, maybe? Three extra hard points. And the Explorer. For a little ship, that thing is armed. Bear in mind that our little thing has just got the three and the one. Anyway. Um, okay, so... What do I do here? Because I've arrived here in order to do the rescue. Planet Doobie Firkin. Let's go to the hangar, then. No, that is that is just the hangar. Is that, am I missing something here? Oh, on the top, on the top. There we go. Hey, the fold, right. Um, the fold, a horrible, ironic nickname for that city, if you could even call it a city, the largest refugee camp in the known space to which the few living Equinians had been sent after the war with the children. The Equinians had been one of the six founding guilds of the Children of the Sun, attempting to unite all the neighbouring planets of the territory under a single insignia. Over the years, power disputes were divi uh, dividing positions and generating hostility, until, finally, the Equinians tried to take control, which turned out to be a terrible mistake. More than a war, it was genocide. It didn't take long for the Children of the Sun to hunt down the survival Equinians, sell them as slaves throughout the galaxy for tens of years. It was not until their defeat at the hands of the Interstellar Republic that the children were forced to abolish slavery, forcing them not only to free all captive men, but also should be responsible for the construction uh, of the city of refuge. These sentences are really bad, well, badly formed. Uh, where they would uh, allocate the former slaves. The rest is history. Okay, Let's go to the meeting point with the kidnappers. Someday children and some will pay for their crimes. Uh, Let's go to meeting point. You advance to the address where you have been summoned. That city had gone out of control. After years of complete government indifference, this city had become a cauldron of criminality too big to stop. The security forces were practically non-existent, and the few that remained were bought by the mafias that now controlled the city. Uh, in some streets, you can see piles of four or five bodies in broad daylight. Some of them are in an advanced state of decomposition. The vapors from the garbage that accumulates in the streets climbed up between the houses piled on one on top of the other like large mechanical blocks. With some difficulty you arrive at the street marked on the note. You don't have to look very hard as soon as you make a brief examination to see one of the apartments with the symbol of the bleeding eye. Crew, draw your weapons. We don't know what we can find around here. We have to go in. Let's go cautiously with weapons drawn. You approach the door and discover that it's open. Carefully you open it and check the room. It's completely empty. On one of the tables you find a note that addressed to you. Greetings, Captain. I think we have something of your interest. We should have a nice chat in our tavern. I look forward to seeing you in the slaughterhouse. Show the glass eye to the waiter. The password is the walls hide in the fold. A warm greeting from your friend. Damn it, they're not here. Okay. Let's go continue. The bar was not much better than the outside. When you pass through the door, the smell of urine hits you while the customers whisper. The light is dim so much that it is hard to tell the people that are further away than the huge bar where a man with a scar on his face and a long hair rubs one of the glasses. Because of the condition of the cloth he's using, it's hard for you to believe that it's more hygienic than not washing it at all. <laughs> a couple of men yell drunkenly at the bar and they don't take long to warm up. Ending up with the larger of the two men punching the other one. The man, as if nothing just happened, finishes whatever it was he was drinking and spits it on his partner, who was still on the ground before he leaves the tavern. Cool. Um, we approach the waiter. The waiter looks at you from head to toe, surprised. Slowly he puts the glass on the bar and crosses his arms with a threatening aspect. What do you want? You can tell the background noise has dramatically decreased in volume. The walls decrease in the fold, give him the crystal eye. The man laughs, relieved. 
Damn it, for a second I was actually scared. I thought that, whatever. Come in, guys. He approach. He approaches the gate of the bar and gives you the, his authorization to go in. Go on, they're waiting for you. We go in and follow the corridor. The corridor goes towards some long stairs. You go down in spite of the lack of light and exit a door cust custodied by two guards who open it up. You go into the room where a man is sitting on the desk. Wow. What on a, who do we have here? The man walks up around you while he applauds once or twice in a sarcastic way. If it isn't Spanj the Defiant, blessed are my eyes, alive and without a scratch after our attempts to end your life. Where's my crew member? You calm, Captain. We haven't even introduced ourselves. You can call me Sheep. Everyone does. Maybe you should sit down before hearing this. I'm sorry to give you the news, but he's dead. Don't worry, those who killed him have had their punishment. The orders were exclusively to kill you. Creative licenses aren't allowed when doing one of our jobs, and it gets even worse when it involves collateral damage. It might seem weird, but we have a code. The man deeply inspires to relax and throws on the table two glass eyes stained with blood. They didn't pay us a special amount of credit for your head, you know, but there, that doesn't matter. I would have done it completely for free. However, here you are, in the office of the leader of the most dangerous mercenary organization in the galaxy. If you're telling me this, that means you guys are not as efficient as you believe you are. You're nothing more than a group of murderers. Uh, let's go with this one. Sheep laughs out loud. What a name, Sheep. Seriously. <laughs> you're brave. There's no doubt about that. But let me tell you something. Everyone who's out there, each and every one of those fucking imbeciles who are getting wasted, boasting to be part of the red tier, are just sheep. Ironic, right? The imbeciles look at the trees without seeing the forest. Do you know what I mean, Captain? From one of the compartments of his desk, he takes out a bottle with two glasses and begins to fill them. Enlighten me. In, or in my opinion, you're the same type of scum. It enlightened me. Let's, let's play along for a bit. You see, even if you don't want to believe it, cons I consider myself a very supportive person. Really. I, I suffer with the discomfort of my people. Every day that passes, every hour, every minute that we keep being here locked up in this immense bag of shit they call the fold. Consumes me. Seeing how the people die of hunger on the streets. Children are sold by their parents. Women marketed as cattle. Do you think that's life? Uh, all right then, so making profit with crime is your act of charity? What was done to your people was a terrible crime. Let's go with the top one. I came to the city when I was only a child, and as I grew up, I saw the pride of my people evaporate. I dreamed of the day when the Republic would win the war and finally we would be liberated, seeing how you signed the peace treaty, knowing what they were doing with us. Uh, was the straw that broke the camel's back. I promised myself that I would get my people out of there, and 20 years later, here I am, surrounded by inept people who would kill their mothers for a couple of injectors, and talking to one of the captains of, the, of those who prefer to stay in power than to help up uh, your people. The world is rotten, Captain, and, when some, and someone has to clean it. Children of the Sun, the Republic, the Golden Hand, whatever its alignment, the Red Tear doesn't discriminate. The world has lost its value, and as long as that goes on, we're lost. The children advance through the galaxy, and the Republic is more concerned with maintaining what little remains of its power than with helping those who are suffering. Someone might must fight for the people, and those people are us. Enough small talk. What is it that you want from me? We're in the same boat, Captain. The war between the Republic and the children, it seems that we've found a common enemy. You have been able to elude my men and reach me in person. I want you to be part of the organization. I assure you that you will not have to kill anyone who does not deserve it. All orders go through me to be approved. <laughs> what? <laughs> Are you serious? So he wants me to join this criminal gang. Okay, I'll join, but it's up to me to accept the contracts you offer me. I'll never be part of such an organization. Wow. <laughs> oh, my. Wow. Okay. So these guys are basically mafia. But so I get what he's saying. You know, they're in a bloody crappy situation. What do you expect? They're going to. Um, but that sort of that sort of guy is the kind of guy that would become a fascist dictator and, and very quickly just 
turn a shitty situation into a shittier one. What do you do? Are you like, do you join? And because if I refuse, he's probably just going to try and kill me. <laughs> so well, that's a tough one. Morally, I don't want to join because go screw yourself. Okay, yes, that situation needs to be resolved, but it's not up to me. I'm just a captain in a republic. That's something the whole republic needs to kind of work on, and get together with. But um, self-preservation says join his organization and accept some contracts. But I think you know it's probably going to bite me in the ass later on. Oh, that's a tough one. Oh, it's a tough one. I don't know what to do. Right, I'm going to refuse because I can't. I've got to go with principles. Right, I'll never be part of such an organization. Okay, you're making a big mistake. I understand your perspective, but difficult times demands desperate measures. The republic has its hands as bloodstained as ours. I won't force you to do anything you don't want to do, but this is the opportunity to rethink our ideals and achieve a new era of peace by killing our enemies together. <laughs> okay, I'll join. <laughs> oh, good luck with your dream, sheep. I hope I never see you again. Again, I'm going to back out. What? He's just let us go. Wow. This is this is the guy that like tried to kill me. He tried to have me killed. Exit. Captain Engineering, Captain Engineering. Right, well, you know, at least we've not rescued our crewman because he was shot. He was killed. After receiving a summons via the loudspeaker, you quickly head to engineering. The chief engineer is already waiting for you. Bad news, Captain. We have a terrible system breakdown in the engines that will permanently reduce its power unless we resolve it now. Also, we don't have the needed parts to fix it. Our only option is using parts of the ship fuselage to repair the engines, but this option will weaken the ship's hull until we repair it in a station. Weaken the hull? I'll repair it in a station, that's fine. If you decide to repair the engines before things get worse, there'll be time to repair the hull later on. Exactly, yeah. Uh, it's taking about 21%. It's taking about 21% off of our hull. Fine. Huh. Oh, we've got some suspicious activity stuff in here, but we've got one more contract, the just freighter in distress, which is over back in, uh, over in Remim. Remim. Uh, let's quickly pop to this uh, space station here and, and fix up the hull. There are some contracts we can accept here as well, actually, thinking about it. I'm not sure if I want to, or maybe we should actually advance the story Republic a little bit. Ship requesting docking be permission. accepting contracts Please. all day Welcome, and Captain. never get anywhere. Kick your boots off. Kick My your boots off. your house. All right, yeah. <laughs> I run a space station. <laughs> what did you? What did you? <laughs> you inherit it from your mum or something? Mikasa Zukasa. Dark. All right. Cheeky repair. Here you can turn in your prisoners for a reward. Didn't we take prisoners? Yes. Confirm prisoner exchange. Okay, let's get to Remim and see if we can figure out that freighter in distress mission. And then I think we're going to go on with the story, the actual main one. All right. So we just need um, pressing W to go forward. That's not how this works. Remim, go. Warpy Wops. Okay. So we Captain, red... we're getting some very strange readings. The what Genesis. What the hell is that? May, focus the sensors on the signal from coordinates 15008. Augmenting the scale. Decoding parameters. I detect high radiation readings, Captain, but I cannot locate the source of the emission. Crew, exercise extreme caution. We're heading to the source of the signal. Uh, the Genesis is the warship from the prologue that's the the big big boat that we had in the prologue with the nukes and stuff uh, and the captain obviously overrode the generators and, and fired the kind of main cannon which destroyed the These ship look like the remains of a ship captain this is a ship of just any ship these are the remains of captain scott's flagship the genesis <sighs> oh i'm sorry captain we know how much you admired her Scott was the captain in charge of my training during my years as a recruit. I owe her a great deal of who I am today. She didn't deserve an end like that at the hands of her own allies. Prepare the life support equipment. We're going in. 
On your order. Cool. A deep sorrow invades you as you board the ship. The charred, jagged remains barely remind you of what the Genesis once was. You had been lucky enough to train on the Genesis many years ago in your time as a recruit. You'd been able to see your, for yourself what she and her crew were capable of. Jane Scott uh, had been more than just a mentor to you. After years of service with continuous success in battle and after winning the admiration of each of the captains of the Republic, she seemed undoubtedly the right person to put in charge of the army. No soldier could believe the news that she had rejected the post, ceding it to one of her most trusted crew members, Admiral Xiao. Um, we must reach the command bridge. Though many captains questioned her motives, you, who had the honour of knowing her up close, understood perfectly. She was a true woman of action, an adventurous soldier who smiled defiantly every time she faced death. Being an admiral of the Interstellar Republic, to spend the rest of her life going to the council, mediating between interplanetary conflicts, it was not meant for her. The bridge is located on the upper deck of the ship. With a ship in this state, it will be difficult to access. The elevators will not work, so the only possible route there is is via the stairs. The path will not be easy. A massive explosion had left the systems completely useless, meaning several gates will have to be forced open and many routes will be blocked by the rubble. Uh, I'll leave it in your hands, engineers. System upgrade, 6 plus. Let's do it. Roll. Go, go, go. 6 plus. Does that add up? 7 combined? No. <laughs> You're moving as fast as you can through the ship. In one of the access points blocked by rubble, you manage to create a small tunnel through which you fit one by one. The tunnel seems sturdy enough until it suddenly comes down on one of your crew. The rubble falls into the tunnel, collapsing on the crew member's head. Um, keep moving forward. It's too dangerous. We should go back. Let's keep looking for accessible areas. I'm going to keep moving forward because... Oh my lord, wow. Uh, so, advancing through the corridors of the ship slow, uh, is slow and tedious. Engineers attempt to draw plans and schematics to try and determine a safe and efficient route for the rest of the team. Cautiously move through the, the remains of the Genesis to come to the main bridge. Prepare this, the machinery. We must open the gate. We'll try to build a power bridge to re-establish the systems. Bo in both cases, I need to roll an 8 or above. Um, let's try the power bridge option. I don't know. I'm feeling a little bit more confident about this one, but we've got a, we've got a 9. Fantastic. Engineer teams opens a panel and quickly begins connecting cables to the generators you brought. The concept is simple. Disconnect the doors from its current dysfunctional system and connect it up to external, externally in order to activate it from one of your own systems. You cross your fingers, the equipment turns on, and the access terminal quickly lights up. Enter the command bridge. The interior doesn't seem much better than the rest of the ship's hull. Most of the terminals are completely useless. Most of the screens have been shattered into a thousand pieces. You relentlessly search the bridge but find nothing. The black box has completely disappeared. Looks like that's not all that's missing. Uh, you were absolutely right. The black box is a mystery, but when, what was even more disturbing is that there'd been no sign of Captain Scott's body. All along the ship, you'd seen the bodies of multiple crew who had died in combat. In other rooms, you'd simply found the hull torn, causing complete decompression of the room. Anyone inside would have been violently jettisoned. This was different. Despite the damage to the bridge, it was clear from the investigation that the bridge had not been depressurized. I've gained observant. <laughs> there we go. Uh, let's search the rest of the ship. Follow a clear path without finding anything interesting. The state of the ship is catastrophic. You had done well to deploy the appropriate machinery for boarding because re-establishing a flow of energy, even if it was external, would require days of work. Since you cannot access the black box on the bridge... Uh possible <laughs> an exceptionally difficult solution in theory if you could access the genesis may core you could recover some of the data and upload it to your ship's may to find out exactly what happened uh engineers do you think it's possible it's theoretically possible captain the only concern is the state of the may system core if it weren't so badly damaged we could easily do the data transfer as it is there is a possibility that we could corrupt our own system take some time for the engineering team to connect the systems without generating fatal errors we must try you are able to access the room where the hardware of the May system is located without much difficulty. It seems especially complex. The first time you saw this room during the instructional years, it didn't draw your attention at all. Now, after having gone through dozens of ships, you could immediately notice the difference. Genesis was definitely at a different level than the rest of the ships in the interstellar fleet. Most of the components are badly damaged, but you know it matters little. The core is the only fundamental part of the system. It's essentially a module where the process data was recorded allowing full recovery in case the rest of the system failed. At least, it was how you understood it. 
so many years of being familiar with the ship had given you that kind of notion, but you were sure it was something much more complex. In any case, as soon as you get hold of it, the rest would be responsibility of the engineering team. Search for the core. You carefully open the compartment and find the module in a terrib <laughs> terrible disarray. Fortunately, after tinkering with it for a while, you manage to remove the module. It is difficult to know if it was damaged. The outside appeared somewhat burnt, like a black sheet of paint covering it, which was not a very good sign. Nonetheless, you can't make a proper diagnosis until you reviewed it more carefully. Gains may call from the Genesis. Time to go. We must relay this to Vice Admiral Flynn. You leave the ship, but not before attaching one of your trackers to the ship's hull. As soon as you relay your findings to Vice Admiral Flynn, the Republic will try to recover what's left of the Genesis. After all, it had been the flagship of the Republic for decades. Let's go back to headquarters. I still Boom. can't believe it. The Genesis was the most powerful ship of the Republic. I'm surprised that the Children of the Sun were able to destroy it. Nartos's ships outnumbered our ships by a wide margin, Captain. The probability of success was extremely low. I'm sure that Captain Scott knew it. May, set a course to the General Headquarters. We'll inform Admiral Flynn of the situation after the War Council. We nice. won't abandon Scott's ship as if it were space trash. Space trash. Well, first of all, we've got a freighter in distress. Do we need to attend to? Seriously? Another interception? Activate <laughs> the weapons! You all said it, May. Battle stations. Taking a lot of fire. There we go. Excellent work, team. Are you all okay? You all okay? Take that loot. Thank you very much. Right. Where were we? We were so rudely interrupted. In front of you, there are pirate ships surrounding a cargo ship. As soon as they detect your presence, they open communications. Greetings, Captain. I imagine you're here because you received a request for help from this transport ship. I'm afraid that you have been the victim of a deception. The corrupt company to which this ship belongs owes a large amount to our organization. We do not intend to hurt anyone. We only want to take what is I. <laughs> you lie! Prepare to die! <laughs> It's okay. Stay with their merchandise. Uh, give me more details. Captain of the Pirates, keep talking. This transport company has been making deals with pirates and smugglers for a long time to carry out some shady tasks. If you help us recover the debt, we will give you part of the profits as a reward. We promise that no one will be hurt. The captain of the cargo ships enters the communication. What the hell are you waiting for, Captain? The duty of the Republic fleet is to protect ships like ours. Kill them at once. Support the freighter or support the pirates? I mean, it's kind of like, well, if you're calling them pirates, they're pirates, aren't they? <laughs> the, the game is giving the... Uh, the game away is that is that right so um yeah i mean this is some shady stuff right here the freighter has the uh, appropriate licenses and paperwork so i'm going to support the freighter shiba republic cannot support pirate boarding although doing that protects some criminals uh you decide to support the cargo ship and you give orders to start the attack why <laughs> stand down the weapons all crew to battle and, uh, station ship of the republic and Soon, therefore you'll be nothing but space ash oh okay i'm glad i i'll make sure to end you guys. quickly i mean that's pretty quick missiles that way Ooh, front. There we go. Target's neutralized. Captain the Freighter contacts us at danger. the end of the battle. Thanks, Captain. Don't believe what the pirates said. Everything is the lie. We work for an honest legal transport company here. Have a reward of magnificent work. Cool. Thanks. Love that. Magnificent work. Fantastic. Okay. God, I'm not quite in range of that bit of loot over there. Let's move the ship. Whoop, 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 whoop. There we go, right. So there we go. Okay, so our mission is now changed to Council of War. First of all, I think we need to put some dudes in sickbay. 
because uh, I noticed that a couple of our crew members there is not very well. So sick bay, Jesk Walker and Lombard, please, uh, you guys get better. Thank you very much. And also, we've got some upgrade points to assign. Uh, so these guys, I'm sort of working on the weapon system, even though they're completely and utterly ripping the shreds out of everything at the moment. Just max these guys out on what I'm currently setting them to. So let's go to investigations. Ah, right, okay. So the crew member that died was actually the, the scientist that I was uh, training for shields. That's nasty. Right, okay, fine. We'll have to just... Jesk Walker, we need another scientist. I need to find a station where I can hire some crew. <laughs> to replace the one that died. <laughs> right, uh, so... Com Comdamia, Kodmadia. Attend the war council, Flynn in Kodmadia. There we go. Here we go. Greetings, Captain. I hope you didn't have any setbacks on your journey here. All of our missions have setbacks, sir. In fact, I must speak with you in private. The war council will be held in a few hours. Whatever it is, we'll have to wait. Land immediately and take care of everything before the council. At your disposal, Admiral. <laughs> Captain's banners the defiance. <laughs> Captain in storage. Oh Lord, what is this? <laughs> I'm like, I, I love these little kind of random events that happen, but I'm trying to do something. It's like, God damn it! Well, I suppose that would be exactly how a real captain would feel when they're just trying to achieve something, and you got to attend these random crap that comes up. <laughs> Uh, Lombard enters the command room to discuss initial captain. We've just finished provision tally. Oh, okay, so we've got our we've got our um, our stowaway again. Okay, so let's have a look. We've got a roll of seven or above. Let's see if we can find our stowaway. That's a star. We get it. Brilliant. Um, stop right there. I know who you are. This isn't a place. This isn't a place or a little girl. Uh, sorry, must you go home? Right. Okay. So that's that's the same same thing as what we had when, in the last episode. We'll just speed through that. And we have to take her back home. Okay. The headquarters is there. That's the hangar. That's the exit. Right. Okay. Headquarters. War Council. Let's do this. Uh, you enter the headquarters for the first time, and it leaves you quite surprised. Most of your military training had taken place at the Tacit Stella Barracks. A stark contrast to the sophistication you see before you. Uh, captains and other military officials are all heading for the immense hall where the meeting is about to take place. This is only the beginning, even though the attack by the Children of the Sun had caught the Republic off guard. You are quick to gather yourself and begin planning for the counterattack. Head towards the Great Hall. The hall is gigantic. A large table in the background presides over the meeting, uh, while the rest of the captains are seated in their corresponding area. You enter your area, and after a few minutes, the council begins. A few words to honour the hundreds of lives that had perished in the defence of Tacit Stella. Vice Admiral Flynn addresses a hall. It's time to plan our next move. The Republic has been decimated. In these dark times, we need a firm hand to lead the counterattack. As a first step, the Council has promoted me to Admiral. I promise not to disappoint you. I'll make the Children of the Sun pay for the assassination of Admiral Xiao. The whispers among the crowd make it clear that the majority of captains had not been informed of the changes. The Interstellar Republic usually chooses its commanders democratically from among the captains and higher ranks. An election behind closed doors was not customary, but with war knocking at the door, emergency protocols have taken precedent. That the second in command should take control seemed without doubt the most efficient way to start moving. Uh, what's the situation at Tacit, Tacit Stella? The meeting opens up to a forum. You ask for permission to speak in order to find out what the situation at the old headquarters is. The sacrifice of Captain Scott and her crew managed to balance the battle. Only a handful of ships guard the destroyer Phoenix, Admiral Nato's ship. The final attack was powerful enough to pierce the shields and leave the engines completely useless. If Nartos is unprotected, we must act as soon as possible. We have information that Admiral Nartos has left the ship to lead the space conquest, but if he thinks we won't act. He underestimates us. We'll finish the ship long before they expect it. However, we must be cautious. It could be one more trap from the children. It is possible they're waiting for us to take bait and kill those of us that are left alive. Um, it's just nonsense. Waiting any longer will reduce our chances of chances of success. <sighs> we must be certain. So, brash or cautious? That's this is it. You know, uh, should I be brash? 
I mean, I say let's just fucking let's just get in there and blow him up. <laughs> I understand your concern. Phoenix is fearsome enemy and is at our mercy, but we do not know what Admiral Nartos has in store. An improvised attack would be sure to fail, fall directly into his ambush. I will not begin my command by sending men into death trap. That didn't make any sense. The Phoenix warship was an engineering masterpiece, a weapon of such stature that the ba any battle the children participated in was a decisive victory. It had even been able to stop the Genesis, the best warship of the Republic. If the children of the Sun recovered it, it would certainly tip the scales. Listen to the rest of the hearing. The council concludes and the gigantic hall quickly empties. Continued disagreement undermines your spirits. Far from consolidating uh, you as a unit, the attack had divided you more than you thought. The various groups of captains position themselves on different sides, supporting the representatives they thought best qualified for the position of Admiral, as much as it bothered them to see Flynn as Admiral of the Republic. Returning the blow to the children was much more important. After hours of debate, Flynn and the rest of the senior officials will start planning the assault. Even if you took your time to ensure the offensive was set up, the Republic would make the children pay for everything they had done. Go back to the ship. There we go. Now what? <laughs> So, from what I gather, basically, um, Nartos' ship, the big bugger, uh, that was Sharp Hill, Main City. Hmm. I'll have a look at that in a second. Nartos' ship was the big bugger in the prologue that kind of... Uh, I mean, we got destroyed by lots of ships. It wasn't just Nartos' ship. There was just so many there um, that they, they destroyed everything. And then, of course, Captain Scott fired this main cannon, which uh, damaged Nartos' ship quite severely, but didn't destroy it, which is kind of disappointing. Um... So but what they're talking about is like, right, okay, well, the ship is damaged and we, we know where it is, uh, but it could be a trap. Uh, do we go and try and take it out now before they recover it fully and it becomes, you know, back into circulation of their fleet, considering uh, how powerful that ship is? That would be really bad. Or do we, you know, have a look to see if it is a trap before we run in, and in which case we risk that ship running away and, and stuff. So I'm, I'm like, let's just get in there and blow it up. Come on. Uh, but there seems to be a split among all the captains about what to do. So there we go. Um, Sharp Hill, uh, main city controlled by the SMC. Majority of high corporate positions of their family security guards reside in the city. Okay, well, right, we could have a look at that. It might lead to a side quest. But uh, I think that's going to be... We're going to have to leave that for next time. We're going to have to leave what's going to happen next until the next video. That is going to be all for today, ladies and gentlemen. I think that leaves it in a kind of weird place. But you can see, hopefully, you can see now where this, how this story develops and how these choices in this game really affect decisions i love it i love the uh, uh rpg elements to this and i am um, uh, some of you probably put off by this whole text-based thing of it but actually i it's it's just cool it's like an interactive book <laughs> i hope you're enjoying these episodes still thank you so much for watching uh if you're still here <laughs> and hopefully i'll see you next time until then take care bye bye